Welcome to the bite-sized video for the Digital Business Services T-Level, where we'll explore task one for the Data Technician Employer Set project. The Employer Set project consists of a series of tasks designed to assess the five objectives shown on the screen. This skills assessment task is marked by NCFE and is conducted during a two week assessment window, which will be available during the summer and autumn terms. Tasks are designed to replicate the real life industry experience. To help achieve this, we do use employers and industry experts when developing the ESP. This video will focus on task one, where students will be project planning using the information from the brief and this task will be assessing the assessment objectives one through to four. Now, EO4 marks are available for students demonstrating their English skills as well. Now, task one occurs during the first assessment week, and this is scheduled by you, the provider, during the window stipulated by NCFE, which can be found in our key date schedule. The session is supervised rather than invigilated and lasts three hours with a 15 minute supervised rest break permitted. If students have any access arrangements or reasonable adjustments, such as additional time for assessments, then you should apply that internally and increase the time for the task by the relevant amount. However, task 2A will also need to be scheduled during the same window as task 1, so it's recommended you schedule task 1 early in the assessment window. The assessment material should only be available to the students during the scheduled session, so do take account of this and ensure that you have secure storage areas for students' evidence. Internet access is permitted for limited purposes, such as access to online project planning and management tools with a copy of the student's browsing history also required to help ensure this. You must ensure that privacy mode has been disabled with policies applied to prevent students from deleting their browsing history. Now, if a student misses task one, then you can rearrange a new session within the first assessment window week, but before the student sits task 2A. Now, task one is worth a total of 18 marks, with two of those marks for the demonstration of English skills. Um, you'll see an example from the summer 22 assessment shown on the screen. Students will be using the information in the brief to consider the project plan, any potential risks to the plan, and the production of a suitable project management tool. Their chart will be supported with their rationale, where students will need to justify the decisions made and explain any potential risks from carrying out the plan. The project management tool will need students to consider the project life cycle. And students should carefully read the brief to ensure they address this aspect. When creating their planning chart, first and foremost is the need of the business and the information in the brief, such as the project life cycle aspect just discussed. Does the client have any specific timescales or deadlines in mind and ensuring their plan can abide by the client's schedule? Which means students will need to consider what information is needed for the different tasks, which can affect the order of the task and when they can be scheduled if they're reliant on results from another activity. Or perhaps the same stakeholders need to be involved in certain tasks and ensuring they're available to be involved with any other activity. Or any other resource requirements such as venue, equipment, facilities, to name a few. With each choice being evaluated for potential risk and what impact that would have on the business and their goals. With all these considerations being justified with their support and rationale. And their rationale should be well written and care taken with spelling, punctuation and grammar since there's an additional two marks available for demonstrating these English skills. 
The rationale should explain what they've done with their plan, justify what they've done, why they've done that, and mention any risks involved. The simple Gantt chart example shown has been produced using the Summer 22 assessment where businesses planning to launch new products and needs to manufacture and market the product. Using this example, um, it might decide to have the marketing team begin working on their strategy and start the stock production at the same time. And my justification might be that they don't involve the same teams or resources, so there's no problem in running them concurrently. But a risk might be that there are issues during stock production that can delay the launch, which could affect when the marketing campaign could launch. And the mitigation might be to have a regular check-ins with the manufacturer for progress reports. Preparing students with the use of project planning tools. The tools might change, so be familiar with pl um, planning tools highlighted in the specifications. For example, if they need to create a Gantt chart, have they clearly identified the tasks and stages, what needs to be completed by, by when in task order? The information will clearly, clearly be available, so have they created an accurate plan based on this? Use projects in class and in groups, plan through it using a range of planning techniques. For example, start with a flow chart and work through to a Gantt chart. Have them follow the plan to see how accurate their timescales are and how they might need to adapt a plan and the impact of this. There are loads of example case studies of projects that have failed due to bad planning. So use these to show, to show students how easily bad planning can cost a project's failure. Convert information provided into relevant plan. And um, can your students include any additional information to make the plan clearer? For example, some people may consider using colour coding to link tasks to a department. If they've done this, have they been consistent and included a legend? Or maybe colours based on a risk? If so, have they explained the colour coding? Clear communication, does the information link to the scenario? Have they used correct terminology? Is the communication professional? Have they explained everything that's been requested in the assessment? We do hope you found this useful and have a better understanding of task one and do see our other bite-sized videos that form part of this employer set project series. Thank you.